everyone, Diane here. Welcome to my studio. Today we're going to paint a kitten. I think you might call this a Persian kitten. Just going to use a couple of colours, which will be a potter's pink. I'm also using a colour called Davies Grey, which um, is a, a very, very soft, pale grey, which would be ideal for the, for the kitten. So I'm just uh, moistening my paints at the moment to get them ready to work with and let's get started. So the kitten has um, pink on the inside of his ears so we're going to start off with a little dash of pink in there just to indicate the inside of the kitten's ears and um, I should have mentioned we're going to be using a tiny tiny bit of um, cobalt blue for the shadow and we're just going to let that run and then I'm going to be picking up the, the Davies Grey and I'm not going to be mixing this, this, is, this kind of goes against my usual method of painting because I'm not going to mix the Davies Grey with anything, it's just going to be neat out of the tin. I was talking about this tin of paints the other day um, on a video that I'm going to be offering to my members when we start our uh, when we start our members group so you'll be able to subscribe to get extra um, content from me and in there there's going to be a lot of really useful information on how to paint and how to start and, and one of the videos I'm going to do it's already been done is about um, what to paint colors you should have in your paint box in your set. And Davies Grey is one that is absolutely not essential. It doesn't come in there as being one of the critical colours. But um, I happened to acquire a, a little pan of it from somebody who'd given up painting. And I've never used it before. I didn't even know I had it until I came to explore this paint box. Um, this one. And uh, I suddenly found when I took the box to pieces that I had this paint called Davies Grey and it's, I said to myself at the time, I don't know what I'm going to use that for, but it's a nice soft grey, so I'm sure it will come in handy for something. And then I saw this picture of uh, this lovely little Persian kitten and uh, I thought, oh, that would work. So I'm just putting in the underlayer here of um, the grey for this little cat. And just, uh, there's not much to say about it really. I can't really uh, say much about the way I'm doing this except I'm doing it very lightly. And um, this is the first layer. And I'll come back in a second to darken that up with the crucial places. It worked really well when I did the trial yesterday, but you know how it is. Sometimes you have uh, a bit of a fluky stroke of luck and even if you've got plenty of experience sometimes it is the case that you do something first time round and you can never do it again in the same way so c'est comme ça la vie as they say over here in France um, right now the eyes we need black and I'm using here a number five small round brush and that's, so that's quite a lot smaller than what I usually use so I'm just going to outline first of all that's what we're going to do is outline the eye um, this is not being done with gay abandon <clears throat> this bit <laughs> uh, I have a feeling that that is wet so I'm not going to do that one We'll just do this one and I'll come back to the other side. So we're going to do the round like that. And then he has a little nose, as you would expect, with little dark bits there like that. And then a tiny little mouth like that. And down here he's got pointy claws just showing through 
and now I'm going to let him dry. So I'm going to go away and check on lunch. Okay, so now this is dry and I'm going to outline the second eye as I did uh, the other one a minute ago. So we'll do that first so that that can be drying while we move on to the next step. You will be able to get the sketch for this from the website, the website dianeanton.com um, and I suggest that you trace it very lightly and then uh, try to paint as freely as possible inside those lines. Okay, so I'm just going to look at my original here a little bit. And uh, this is the one I did yesterday. So the Davies Grey is really good for this because if you use a diluted black, which will give you a grey, then it's going to be a very harsh colour, really. So you don't really want to do that. But this Davies Grey is kind of, it's a very soft, a very soft colour. Ideal for fur and so on. So now I'm just putting in the second, the second uh, layer of paint, just in small broken, uh, I was going to say stitches, I've been doing some knitting lately and it's not broken stitches are they, they're broken strokes. I'm trying to do six things at the same time at the moment so you have to forgive me if I use the wrong vocabulary. I'm trying to cook and stretch paper, worry about the dog getting through fences and uh, and into the sheep pasture. Not that she would do anything, she loves to hang out with the lambs but and she wouldn't do any harm but she does rather like to eat their um, poo. So that's not necessarily a good thing although I'll tell you what there's enough poo lying in the field. She's welcome to have some of it and uh, we have to go around every now and again picking it up because we're still in the middle of a drought here and nothing's breaking down. So we have to pick up the poo because the sheep normally go into a much bigger field but they can't at the moment because it's too dry and we're trying to let the grass grow. And um, if they're in a very big field of course the, the droppings kind of just disappear eventually but when they're confined to a smaller space it doesn't happen. So the joys of animal keeping is yes. But it is lovely, we've got this tame lamb and he comes up for a cuddle. Every time you come anywhere near him, he rushes up. I've never seen anything like it. We've had lambs for about five years now, but I've never had one before that was quite so loving. Okay, so there's our first coat of kitten. My cat Oriole is sitting over there watching the birds out of the window. We don't let him out because of the birds. Oriole, don't get jealous because I'm painting a kitten. Okay, so now the next step, this kitten has got uh, lovely blue eyes and we're going to pick up some, some turquoise blue. And I'm just going to put that in there for his beautiful blue eyes. and then we must let that dry before we put the pupils in. And then I haven't painted his little pink nose yet, so I'm back to the potter's pink. And just got a little nosy thing of me. What's it there? Okay. And I'm just going to pick up a slightly bigger brush and I'm going to put a little bit of shadow underneath him and I'm going to mix a little bit of Potter's Grey together with, <coughs> sorry, Potter's Pink with the grey and just
Just drop in something for him to sit on. <coughs> and I think I want to um, strengthen the colour of his ears a bit. And the blue there. And I'm going to have to wait a minute for that, uh, for the blue of his eyes to dry. So I'll be back in a sec. Now I'm going to do the pupils in the cat's eyes. So just uh, picking up some black there. Same brush. And they are, they tend to be um what's the word like a pointed oval slitty something like that and just darken that a little bit That's step one we'll let that dry Make sure the, the shape is right, so and maybe we're going to put strength on the shadow here a little bit between his legs. Forget that it always dries lighter, so it looks too dark when you first put it on. And I always think, ah, oh. but then it dries. Very pale pink near to the mouth. Oriole, please. And then we need to just darken the top half. Very delicate. Darken the top half of the eye. A little bit there. You could drop a tiny, tiny smidgen of turquoise in on one side. <clears throat> and then we have to think about his whiskers, and I'm just going to use a sharp pencil for that. So we put the little dewberries there, and then and the good thing about using pencil for whiskers is if one gets bent like that, which is bound to happen, you can just rub it out. Do it again. So as a finishing touch, I'm going to just add a couple of balls of wool to this uh, painting um, because the kitten is looking somewhat wistful and uh, 
I imagine that she is just wondering whether or not she's allowed to play with mummy's knitting, which of course she isn't. So I'm drawing a circle here and uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just put a light wash in there and I think we'll make it pink, but we'll make it a nice soft pink. So we'll make it potter's pink with a tiny dash of um, permanent rose just to make it a little bit warmer. And uh, we'll just pop that color in fairly loosely. I'm painting on um, a smooth textured paper here, which uh, is okay, but uh, you might be using a, a more a hot, a cold pressed paper. This I think is a kind of hot pressed. And also remember that uh, Potter's Pink has a lot of granulating power so as it, as it goes on it will uh, fall into a kind of um, irregular shaded pattern if you like which is very suitable for wool so there's one do you think I should have two what do you think Oriole you come to say hi to the kitten do you think you could not walk on my painting <clears throat> Okay, so while Oriole is here, uh, let's just put a, a shadow in underneath, a shadow in underneath the uh, the ball of wool. Let that bleed out a little bit, and we'll take the shadow a bit further on, also underneath the kitten, so she has a nice stable table to stand on. And I know that doesn't doesn't look like wool yet because it's not dry so we're going to wait for that to dry and then I'll put in the strands of wool using a slightly slightly darker shade of pink okay so we'll just leave that for a second I'll turn you off but I will turn you back on again I promise it's not the end Okay, so I've mixed up um, a slightly darker pink using a little touch of um, quinacridone purple, mauve, violet, whatever. And I'm just going to come in now and hopefully indicate some of the areas of shadow which are created by the windings of the, of the wool. I'm not going to do this in great detail because I don't, it's not what I do, but just to indicate the fact that it is a ball of wool, which is after all the goal. I don't think I've ever painted a ball of wool before. something that comes up often. Okay, that will probably do. And I will just um, darken the shadow underneath. There. A bit of local colour, so a little bit of pink from the from the actual ball itself. We'll let that dry properly now. I'll maybe increase the shadow under the kitten a little bit. You can make his or her paws stand out a little bit more. And I'm going to call that a day. I'm not going to fiddle with it. Hope you enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, take a look at some of the other videos we've got up on YouTube. Uh, you're, I'm sure you'll find lots of things that uh, are helpful and inspiring and that you'll enjoy sitting with a cup of coffee around the table, pretending I'm there with you. 
and um, yeah so there we are everybody I'll say bye for now bye bye everyone bye bye